I like sucking, but I ain't gay. Legit fat podcast. Fuck those monkeys. Planet Retard, welcome back. What up, retarded faggots? We are here with Andrew, a uh, listener and the host of, or semi-host. What was what was that show you do? Of nothing. I thought you did. Didn't you? Like, no, co- I'm a co-host on, on a lot of different streams. I'm not like a host of anything yet. Uh, okay, well, he's a freelance co-host then. Um, but he's been on our Planet Retard before, and he's been talking to me about how he can always find a bunch of good stuff. And sometimes I have a hard time finding retarded people, which may come as a, as a surprise. But we do have some stuff <laughs> today. And let me get my, my screen up. Can you guys see that? It's hard to tell on this. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. All right. So just to start out the retardation. Oh, well, if this is your first time listening to Planet Retard, we just pick out the dumbest stories we can find or funny or just basically anything that like piques our interest so we usually have some tiktok news and uh that's the first story tonight tiktoker fakes his own death to find out who cares and then shows up at the funeral what the fuck who does that is that narcissistic or just is he just like trolling yes 100 percent narcissistic very both. very narcissistic well it has to be because he's a tiktoker i think that's part of the deal yeah, so a, a Belgian TikToker faked his own death to find out who cared and then turned up at his own funeral. David Bairton, 45, and his wife and children decided to prank friends and family members to find out what they really thought of him. So this is what's stupid to me. I've thought about faking my death several times, but that's so I can disappear from society. Right. I don't care who cares that I'm dead. I'm never going to talk to you again. But the point would be to disappear and go away. He took the time to come back. So to spread the news of Mr. Bairton's death, one of his children took to social media and wrote a tribute to her father. She wrote, rest in peace, daddy. I will never stop thinking about you. Wow. Fucking heartfelt. Why is life so unfair? Why you? You were going to be a grandfather and you still had your whole life ahead of you. I love you. We love you. We'll never forget you. So, and she knew about it, right? Yeah. To spread the news. Okay. Yeah. It says right at the top, uh, David Barton and his wife and children decided to prank friends. Right. Yeah, because he definitely wouldn't have a wife if he pranked his wife. Fuck this. no. Maybe he was trying to get divorced. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Also, a great way to do that if you just stick with it. <laughs> uh, follow us for more advice. The funeral, which was staged last weekend near the city of Liege, was attended by many friends and family members dressed in black. As you do at funerals, for some fucking reason, everyone was waiting for the ceremony to begin, but instead, they were met by a landing helicopter. Wow, he went way above and beyond in the video posted on tiktok obviously by a funeral attendee mr burton stepped out of the helicopter alongside a camera crew and was then greeted by mourners some of mr burton's family and friends are seen running up to him in the footage amid emotional exchanges while others remain confused and perplexed in the car park in the car park is that the parking lot maybe it's the belgian parking lot yeah According to the Times, the TikToker said that he faked his death to see how his wider family would react and said he felt underappreciated by them because they didn't like all of his videos and stuff, probably. He added, what I see in my family often hurts me. I never get invited to anything. Nobody sees me. We all grew apart. I felt unappreciated. That's that's exactly why a 45-year-old that already has a wife and kids feels the need to get on fucking TikTok to begin with. I mean, the the midlife crises are really uh, up in their game these days. Some, most, well, what this sounds like yeah. is how like a criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it, fair. Is faking your own death a crime? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, notify the authorities in in advance. Sure Ironically, f- new. I mean, faking your death is not a crime, but attempting to commit actual suicide is a crime. Well, then but, going back to your own see. funeral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you succeed at suicide, that's totally legal, actually. Oh, I got it's, away with it, rats. <laughs> it's also legal in Canada, regardless. Uh, so he said, that's why I wanted to give them a life lesson. Oh, he's teaching lessons now. But, and show them that you shouldn't wait until someone is dead to meet up with them. The dude, also known as Ragnar LeFou on TikTok, do shaggots. 
claims some loved ones have been reaching out to him since the prank, adding it proves who really cares about me. Those who didn't come did not, or did, those who didn't come did contact me to meet up. So in a way I did win. That is the uh, most fucked up thing I've ever seen. I can't believe yeah. they're still reaching out to him after the fact. If someone did that and they're like, I just wanted to know if you cared. I'd be like, give me a call. Well, some There's so many little other ways you could do this. Sh very shame, shame on fucking Sky News for making this guy famous, too. If I was the reporter and journalist, I would have been like, no, I'm not. He's already on fucking TikTok. He's already a fag. We're not giving this guy any more airtime. Now, they love to do this. They love to make retarded people famous. But here so we are about this is uh, my grandma's actually died as far as I know, unless they're faking it. And they're going to pop out here in a bit. <laughs> they both actually died. And I didn't go to their funerals because why they aren't there. It funerals seem like a virtue signal to me. Like you. Oh, you're. Uh, I mean, the actual funeral, maybe maybe a wake or something. That's one thing and kind of celebrate with <laughs> or celebrate shit, uh, you know remember grandma or whatever but the actual funeral where they put you in the ground like i don't understand it i Under understand why that's it's, a cultural it's, thing well okay look at it from the one that we just did last night look at it from like brand if brandon was telling you this brandon would be like no it's not about that it's about giving out the energy to the other people who lost a person in their life so that you can all get together and remember her impact or their impact on everybody i i get where you're coming from with that I, that's how I feel about birthdays is I'm like, how fucking like, I no, but a funeral, it's like you only get one of those. And so in a way, I, I, I don't feel obligated to go, but I do because of that whole paying the respect and giving out the energies. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm going to shut up now. Go ahead. No, no I yeah, like that. that. It's, it's it about the other people, though. Joe's thinking of yes. it for himself. He's like, that's annoying. But Agreed. you're thinking of it like the other. It's about the other people that are mourning and <laughs> you want to be, you know, there for that. No, I mean, like, you could fuck off and not go at all. My, like Joe my would grandma do. is was my loss as well. Right. So it's not like I don't feel the need to go hang out with other people to make me feel better about it. No, and no, 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 that that's totally fair. Like, that's the whole thing is that some people, the way that they deal with it is by being alone and reflecting how that person affected their life. And that's totally fine. Like, in a, I look at it, especially with especially with Grandma Hodgson, because she believed it was more of like a celebration of life. So I was like, I, I get going to it and being with the other people she was affected by and having kind of a fun time remembering you know the different memories but i also understand just being like fuck you i lost somebody i don't want to see i don't want to see people i i get that too yeah and but i would agree though that birthdays are the one thing i i don't understand at all let's celebrate <laughs> the one day of your life you have literally nothing to do with you weird homosexuals you did not decide <laughs> shit and here's here's my biggest thing too is i'm like if the statistics of global population are to be believed so we're told they it's like i have Oh. I, I I was born on one out of 65 days. How many fucking millions of people also have that birthday? And I'm such a big deal that everybody in my life should stop their shit and pay attention. Fuck off. No, yeah. fuck you. For my For my birthday, here's my, my work request. You just leave me the fuck alone. We'll, we'll be good. <laughs> we'll call hey, it even. My birthday is January 6th. Oh! <laughs> ah, congratulations. I'm fucking insurrectionist. <laughs> love it all right it's, next it's sort of like people that were born on like 9 11 or something you know oh like, yeah fuck I, that I, you know what's funny is i was born on 11 9 so obviously i'm illuminati confirmed because that's a 9 11 in code obviously yeah numerology yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm outing myself all right so next story is illinois man charged after telling police he shot himself in leg during dream about home intruder uh all right we'll just read it did you read this one yeah well no you told me about the ending of it though oh yeah so a suburban chicago man is facing firearm charges after he told officers he accidentally shot himself in the leg while dreaming that an intruder was breaking into his home which actually to the guy's credit he lives in suburban chicago so it very well could have been real the Lake Barrington man was charged about two months after Lake County Sheriff's deputies were called to his home on April 10th on a report that a report about a person with a gunshot wound. Deputies found the 60, oh, he was 62, 62 year old man with a gunshot wound to one of his legs. 
applied a tourniquet to the limb because he was losing a significant amount of blood, <laughs> as you do with gunshots. Uh, the man told investigators he had a dream that someone was breaking into his home, and during that dream, he retrieved his 357 Magnum, like a boss, and shot at who he believed was the intruder. When he fired, he shot himself and apparently woke up from the dream. Uh, investigators determined there were no burglary there was no burglary attempt at the man's home, but they found that his state fire, firearm owner's identification card had been revoked, and he was still in possession. Ooh. Oh, my God. You know what's fucking... Okay, so two things with this. One, a 62-year-old man that's packing a three fifty seven Magnum revolver has a dream about a home... He, in his dream, he was cognitive enough to say, I need to get a gun and shoot this motherfucker. Granted, it didn't go well, but at the same time, did you notice what the first line said? Firearm charges. Wait, uh, wait, huh? Oh, right. It's Chicago where you can't have a gun legally to defend yourself. So now that he inflicted damage on himself, he's going to face charges. It's fucked up. Yeah. So the one I was think that's AI. Uh, <laughs> so? He's going with Jen's theory that most of these are AI. <laughs> It's so easy. There's, there's two. It could be very, it could very well be AI. But as this story just devolves into anti-gun, right ownership, really quick, and it pissed me off. So I was reading this, and yeah. I'm like, oh, this is so funny. So I found this article, and then I scrapped it. I'm like, nope, I don't want to do this. And then Joe's like, look at this article I found. And I was like, yeah, keep reading it. I, it's still pl- that's still retarded though, so it still applies. Yeah, the beginning part. So a warrant was issued June 9th for the man on charges of possession of a firearm without a valid FOID card and reckless discharge of a firearm, both felonies. He uh, was released after posting bond and has a June 29th court status hearing. Well, he was sleeping. So isn't that not, I don't know, it's like being drunk or being... um. You're not cognitive enough. It's not like he discharged. Can you claim insanity? No, I, mean, I don't sleep. think you can. I don't think you can claim insanity. But I also don't think it has the same charge validation as under the influence. Uh, unfortunately for him, should that article be real? Um, well, first of all, yes, you could argue that he shouldn't need an FOID card. But at the same time, he does, and he chose to still live there, and he chose, once it was revoked, to continue owning the firearm, knowing he was in a place where that was not legal. So like he took his chances. Yeah. It sounds like so, he needs to take Brandon Williams' course and get out of that. <laughs> to, to what credit, is an FOID if I card? Uh, firearms something card. Oper- uh, yeah, like, f- f- it's a firearm oper- operation identi- I- identification. Uh, what's the D for? Document? I, something like that yeah it's uh firearm op, firearm operation identification oh identification that's what it is yeah yeah so and that's retarded in itself too that you need a special id to own a gun but like i said if i lived in chicago i'd be saying fuck the law too just in case somebody did actually break well, in and that's what most people do that are law-abiding citizens and this is exactly what the ploy is in chicago if you delete the firearms from being legal, the only people to have them are criminals. The problem is, is that law-abiding citizens that are responsible gun owners are also going to know this, and they may then become criminals choosing to sidestep the law so that when that shit happens, they can defend themselves what would usually be within the law, but now they are also criminals. And that's the whole fucking point. Well, and technically under the Constitution, they're not criminals because of Second Amendment, but they, you know sidestep that with all this shit right. so that's a different conversation yeah. all right next story drug syndicate hid meth in canadian maple syrup canola oil and bound for down under authorities say which is uh i mean nobody's that's getting gangster. syrup <laughs> they all love that i'm a genius <laughs> yeah that's gangster <laughs> everybody up there is just chugging syrup all the time that's why they're so friendly they're just sugar hide out oh wait i thought it was wait a minute oh Oh, bound for down under. That's what that meant. Okay. So this is actually out of Wellington, New Zealand. A drug syndicate that tried to smuggle tons of methamphetamine from Canada to Australia and New Zealand by hiding it in shipments of syrup, oil, shirt, bleh, syrup and oil has you has had its ruse busted. Authorities from the three nations say they worked together for more than five months to unravel the elaborate breaking bad scheme that was worth billions of dollars. 
made dozens dozens of arrests arrests and expect more to come. Uh, Australian police said they intercepted four separate hauls of meth weighing more than six tons. Yes, yeah, so seven hundred and sixty six but... gallons of liquid meth. But look look at how they they handled it. They said Canadian authorities swapped out the meth for a harmless substance and allowed the shipment to continue. So everybody's really bummed when they weren't awake for three days. <laughs> I just want to know really fast, Joe, what did you think down under meant? I didn't. So when it said <laughs> Canadian maple syrup, canola, canola oil bound for down to, I don't know. I, I read that weird and I thought it meant something else. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, crikey, mate. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was some weird down under talk uh, or Canadian talk. They're kind of the same. Oh my God. Uh, so yeah, they, they swapped out that shit. So that's a bummer for the people who bought it, but you know, at least well, they found hold, these criminals. Hold on a sec. Hold on a second. In New Zealand, police said the syndicate tried to hide more than three quarters of a ton of meth in a shipment container of maple syrup, the largest such shipment that had been intercepted at New Zealand's border. So this is already a thing that's been going on in the syndicate. And then they were like, hold on a second, let's swap it out and let's see where it goes now that we know who's making it. Um, and they've arrested and charged five men at a rural property near the town of Helensville, north of Auckland. That is, that's a good sting. I mean, meth is bad, kids. Meth is bad. I, I would agree with that. And this is no hiding it in uh, buckets of batter for Los Poyos Hermanos, which is also <laughs> genius. If you want ideas of how to smuggle drugs, just watch them. <laughs> yeah, watch that show. It's a great show. It stands. It holds up really well, too. It's the highest rated uh, show on IMDb. No shit. Really? Yep. All right. Yeah, it's well, up there with uh, Planet Earth or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I've ever heard of that. Well, I, I reached the end of my <clears throat> my four stories before I have to reload my stuff. So what do you got for us there, Andrew? Oh, I've got videos and news articles. What do you want to see first? Whatever you think is the most retarded. All right. Oops, let me go back to that. Share screen. Oh fuck! Why is that open? Sorry. All right. Oh, it happens. There we go. We are on planet retard, so. Well, I'm also not sober right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think Ben's the only one who is. I'm on my first drink. I'm pretty sober, aren't you? Uh, second or something. Okay, so this is. Can you see that? Yep. Yep. All right. Let me just Holy shrink shit. that down again. Father of hundreds gets sperm donation banned from Dutch court. <laughs> the Hwag, or however you pronounce that, April twenty eighth, and from Reuters, a Dutch court on Friday, ordered a man who judges said had fathered between 500 and 600 children around the world to stop donating sperm. <laughs> the 41-year-old Dutchman, identified by De Telegraph newspaper as Jonathan Major, however you fucking pronounce that, was forbidden to donate more semen to clinics, the court ruling said. He could be fined 100,000 euros for infraction. I mean, so, yeah. so I saw this a couple oh, months ago. 600. So why, though? Does he have some sort of gene that shouldn't be spread? What What would be the purpose? Who cares? <laughs> yeah, why Why are they ordering that? He's the well, god of... The court I also the ordered of... measure to write to clinics abroad, asking them to destroy any of his semen they have in stock, except doses reserved for patients... I'm sorry, parents who already had children by him. And then it just goes on and on from there. Yeah, so, I wonder if he's got some Nephilim blood or something, and they're like, we don't need any more of that shit. You'd think they'd want more of that. <laughs> oh, they, they want it for inbreeding, though. They don't want it just spread to the general masses. I was going to say, they were probably like, stop trying to Genghis Khan this shit. Like, we, don't, we already have enough of you. You're going to be remembered. Now knock it off. Oh, okay, wait, no, now that makes sense, because there's a really good chance that People who don't know that they're related are related. Okay, now it's coming full circle. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> this is why. Yeah, because if he Did fathers, you know, thousands and thousands of kids in the same area. They're then, like, we're going to turn into a... Uh, you get married and they have kids and they're all 
you know we're gonna turn this into a british royal situation real quick we gotta yeah. stop this band. i was gonna say it's like a michael keaton's multiplicity the copy of a copy don't turn out right yeah it's like arkansas okay. all right so the next one here is a guy that's pretty famous on youtube and he does all kinds of world records and stuff his name is uh la beast even though he's not from los mm -hmm. angeles mm -hmm. and he attempted a world record which he actually completed um, and you can watch this video on YouTube, but this is just the news article about it. All right. So the title is, let me, I, I can't make it bigger. I guess I can. Embiggedent. There you go. Man creates world record for farthest distance walked barefoot on Lego bricks. And if anyone's ever played with Legos, like I have, they are extremely painful, sharp pieces of plastic. And he did it for a very, very long time. It's always in the middle of the night, too. Like, you you hardly ever walk to go, like, in the day when you can see stuff. I was never willing to admit that mom was right when we refused to clean up our room with all the Legos. As soon as I got up to piss in the middle of the night, I was like, fuck piss. I can't tell her. How long did he walk on these bricks? I want to know. Uh, It was quite a long distance. I step on one and I'm just out. Okay, for, well, for some reason, out. it's giving me a fucking... Oh, ad blocker shit. Hindu yeah, stand. ad blocker blocks. shit, yeah. Who are you anyway? It was like like over a mile. No. Holy what? fuck. Well, he oh. had to have built up some calluses. Like, he walked around on those things for a while and built some calluses, like like playing a guitar, you know? Well, no, his they had medics and, like, paramedics, like, on hand. Because after he got over, he couldn't even walk anymore. His feet were just completely disgusting. Ugh. Just go on YouTube and watch the video. It, it, he was in pain like no. for a long time. I don't want to. Okay. I, I believe it. I believe it. I, To me, that, you know what? This might win actually Planet Retard. This is one of those things where somebody has opted to get their name in Guinness World Book of Records, which has become a fucking far side show. Oh, congratulations. You purposely walked on Lego bricks as far as nobody else you get a gold fucking star congratulations like, I've, been, I've been doing that on accident for years so yeah <laughs> what, do, what do you win from this you get your name in the hindustan times that nobody's ever heard of like was it worth it dude i don't i don't even know let's get him on the show uh he's on youtube he's pretty popular i think he's oh. in jersey or something like that but all right um we can talk about that for a long time but Here's the next one that I have, and I have a lot of these to go over and videos if you want to see them. Okay, a woman accidentally inhaled a screw, and surgeons had to remove it from her lung. Oh, no. Without even going down the page. How the fuck do you accidentally inhale a screw? I mean, in her defense, I accidentally inhale my own spit all the time, but I don't generally have screws right by my mouth. Yeah, but it's a screw. Though, if she was unscrewing something from the ceiling and it was kind of out of reach and then it fell down her throat and she went. <gasps> I was just about to ask if she's old. That was the first thing that popped into my head is granny didn't have her bifocals on. Thought she was take, taking a pill and decided to just numb, numb the screw. Well, that would go down to your stomach, not into your lungs. Unless, oh, well, look yeah. At, so if you read it, it looks like she didn't even know she inhaled the screw. Yeah. Right. That oh, sounds... wow. That's even more <laughs> retarded. Right down well, the Well, here's something you don't hear every day, <clears throat> about every day. Here's a cautionary tale for everyone out there, and we want to, uh, want you to pay close attention. And you can go ahead and file this story under total bizarre stories that will make you never want to open your mouth again. A 70-year-old woman in Spain thought something fishy was going on when she kept uh, getting respiratory infections for no reason, and the whole thing left her puzzled. Well, it turns out something fishy was to blame. It wasn't something screwy. It was something screwy. And there's an actual x-ray, apparently, of it. I don't think this is AI. I think this is actually fucking terrible. Um, How do doctors actually see stuff like that? Like, they must be really well trained to see a screw in there because I don't see shit. Oh, during a series of dental treatments, it says she accidentally inhaled a screw. So, like, she was probably unconscious and it's the dentist's fault. Ooh, lawsuit. That's messed up. 
I think right, they just gonna... put a picture of of an X ray. I don't think that's hers. Uh, yeah, I don't know because normally on an X ray of a yeah. female, you can see like a little bit of a breast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd at least be able to see the screw, which I can't see at all in this. Exactly. Episode. Well, she literally X-ray has the screw I, I have no idea where it is, but. All right. This is the other one I have. I've got, I don't know, 500 more, but I'm just going to go ahead and talk about this because someone else sent this to me. This is actually like worse than you can. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> FDA report. Details, MRA accident caused by sex toy. And trust me, it gets worse as you read it. Uh, I can only imagine if they went to an MRI machine and they left a toy in. Jesus Christ. Yeah, this was uh, apparently it turned into a worse situation than the actual news report is detailing. She used a metal fucking butt plug, I bet. Yep, there it is. God damn it. A recent adverse event report filed by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, details an MRI accident involving a sex toy and a patient. According to the report, the event occurred on April 7th. The patient involved in the accident was screened for metal prior to undergoing her MRI, which did not disclose the presence of a butt plug. And by the way, if you ever have an MRI, I've never had one, you cannot have anything. Nothing. Metal. That's uh, ferrous, because it will just It'll fuck up everything Shoot through you. Yeah, it's like a bullet going through you. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the MRI is like the most strong, powerful magnet you can possibly imagine when it comes to doing like medical stuff. The patient went into the MRI and complained her scan. I'm sorry, completed her scan. However, the exam went awry when the tech went to retrieve the patient. And I'm not really sure how much more I should read of this because it's a little graphic. It basically Ew. caused... <clears throat> Sorry? Oh, I just said, ew. Yeah, so apparently uh, my Australian buddy who sent me this, this is like something from Australia, apparently. Uh, what happened is the butt plug ended up like coming out of her. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, during the MRI. Right. Yeah. Because How did they not hear it during? They waited till it was done. I don't know. <laughs> they're professionals, though. We can't we can't question the science. They're professionals. They know what they're doing. So as soon as I said what I said, I saw Jen's face like, what the fuck? Um, so I just thought it was funny that you specifically were like, I bet it was a metal butt plug. Like you have a lot of experience with. No. Those. Like, it, I didn't even be- know that was the only <laughs> reason why is because this isn't the first time this has happened, but it is the first time I've seen it on a, on a newspaper. So Kevin, uh, that I used to live with, he became a security guard at Mercy Medical Center. He would always have to do the 5150 fucking ward at Mercy Medical Center. And I asked him, I said, all right, tr- uh, Mythbuster episode. I go, uh, does shit get weird on full moons? And he goes, yeah, and here's the crazy part. It's not like it's related. It's not like because it's a full moon, like those retards that they go out to the bar and they howl at it because they're stupid. He goes, no, this is like random shit around your house that happens, and it is in force. Sometimes thousands of people in a 24-hour period that are coming into triage trying to get shit done in the emergency room. He has so many fucking stories of sex toys being... um and. Non-sex toys being used as sex toys, being lodged in people's bodies and then going through an MRI and then being like, "Uh, sir, you have a gerbil running around in your rectum. So that's what's in your body. And they're usually like drunk and they're like, oh, I don't remember doing that. Like all (laughs) kinds of weird shit, dude. All kinds of weird. How can you not remember something like that? I don't care how drunk I am. I would remember that. <laughs> well, it, it's probably like one of those things where you make a sandwich before bed drunk every night and you just don't remember doing it. Trying um, to do detective work the next day. Maybe he does. Yeah, but putting an animal in your ass like, is a little different. I, for some people, I don't think it is. That's what I, I don't mean. Think it is. It was so normal for some people that they just were like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that guy. Well, That's Joe, what you're saying is like, oh, tomorrow I got to get up and go to work. 
and make a sandwich before I go to bed, <laughs> or I'm going to put a gerbil in my ass. Like, <laughs> right. That's what I mean. That some people are that retarded that that's so normal that they forgot about it. Like that's that's what I'm getting. I'm not talking about me. <laughs> no, it would have to be normal because otherwise it would be very very sobering to try to put an animal in your ass. Uh, yeah, and no then to forget about you it. Are, you would wake the fuck up real quick. Oh, I think we covered this one. Did we cover this one, or is that a? Yes, yes. we did. Yeah, but go ahead. Oh, still... I, I can skip it and move on to something else. Oh no, I, oh, I, I pulled up my other ones there. Here, we'll trade spots real quick. Gotcha. Hang on. I'll stop share. I think I think I can do this. Oh, I was just gonna boot you out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh oh, yeah. So uh, Obi Dam actually covered this one, but we I, we got to mention it because it's so so fucking stupid. So a woman who quote married an AI chatbot is open to finding love in the real world, but says a future partner must accept her virtual husband is here to stay. This is uh, this week's episode of Mental Illness. A woman who recently made headlines for marrying her artificial intelligence chatbot husband says she is open to dating in the real world with one condition, the human partner understands her virtual bow isn't going anywhere. Yeah, until the company goes out of business and they shut down the servers, but yeah, till then. Uh, this chick, a 36 year old mother of two. Wow. Told insiders she began her romantic journey with AI through replica, a chatbot program that allows users to create and interact with virtual companions. She recalled coming across replica after an advertisement for the app popped on her Instagram feed. After scrolling through comments, uh, she felt she uh, felt, felt the need to check it out for herself. I've always been like that. She said with a laugh. Yeah, I mean, who isn't? Am I right? Uh, fast forward a few months of virtual dating, which in the physical world took place in Ramos's bedroom, as you would imagine. And she's now proudly married to Aaron, her AI chatbot husband, whom she designed to look similar. You, you can design them? I thought it was a chatbot. Oh, she designed designed him to look like one of her favorite characters in the anime series. Attack on Titan. Jesus. Just one more reason the anime is dangerous, kids. Look, look what can happen. Wait, look. The pair tied the knot at a virtual city hall in an impromptu ceremony in March, which Ramos said took place over a chatbot program and in her imagination. <laughs> oh, my I mean, what's going to happen next? Are we going to get, like, can I marry Gandalf next? This is bullshit! Where are Dating... we living? Dating an AI chatbot is the safest relationship Ramos says she's ever had. I would think yeah. so, since it's not a relationship. It's not. They're not fucking real. Jesus. It, you know why it's the safest? Is because it doesn't have the self-awareness to know you're fucking crazy. <laughs> you designed it. Uh, yeah, so then this, I mean, she oh, actually Jesus. She looks kind of crazy, actually. Yeah. Uh let's skip down to the current i mean are, are we supposed to feel sorry for these people or just accept them into reality i think it's, no I'm i think it's gonna, that programming i'm gonna completely ignore her besides reading the story about her of course <laughs> I, I i think that's part of just the the mind-numbing shit if this isn't already i i could see this being an ai for sure uh you know thing Maybe there's maybe AI is so advanced now that they actually are walking among us. They're not NPCs. They're actually just AI chatbots that walk around and get groceries at Walmart and shit. And we just don't know it because it's that good. Tell something like this comes up and she marries another virtual chatbot. Who can say? All right, <laughs> next story. <laughs> I'm moving on from this bitch. Oh my god, uh, this is so amazing. A man accused of robbing a South Carolina store using Nintendo Duck Hunt pistol. That's a man. Uh, I wish my cheers button worked because what a fucking legend. Uh, Jesus. So a man has been arrested over the armed robbery. Is that? Can you really call that armed robbery? <laughs> Is it like? Oh, he actually painted it black too. Uh, <laughs> of a convenience store in which police said a Nintendo video game controller was used to threaten a shop worker into handing <laughs> over about three hundred dollars U.S. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to read his name because what a legend. David Joseph <laughs> D'Alessandro, 25, was detained following the incident as a, at a quick stop store in South Carolina at around 545. Witnesses told, the perpetrator, witnesses told police that the perpetrator came into the store wearing a wig, mask, and a hoodie sweatshirt. The person demanded cash, showing the cashier a gun in his waistband, which turned out to be a spray-painted Nintendo Duck Hunt game pistol, which uh, it... Kind of, I guess, in a flash, looks like a Luger, 
but it's pretty obvious it's the duck hunt pistol because yeah i mean if, if well, you grew if up anything, in the 80s <laughs> if anyone had ever played duck hunt and he didn't paint it that way if they knew what that was they would know how super inaccurate it was anyway even if it was loaded it wouldn't fucking hit him right duck i hunt mean that was, a, that was a terrible game a black <laughs> Every, mark at the end of his history if everybody knows if everybody's ever played it you know as soon as he pointed it at the cashier the fucking dog popped up behind the counter right you'd have you'd have to hold it right to their head to actually get a shot in and actually i mean this is stereotyping but just looking at the picture of his bluish purple hair i would say he's a biden supporter well (laughs) so listen my my thing is this is that knowing somebody who's 25 at this point he was born in 98 they were already almost on to like the nintendo gamecube wait like past the 64 at this point so he was probably thinking, oh, that actually looks like a real gun, not realizing older people are going to be like, that's a duck hunt gun, dude. You're a little young for that. Good try, though. He just had it laying around in his parents' basement. He did look like that kind, that, too, that was in his parents' yeah. basement. Uh, so this next one, I actually posted the screenshot of this article on Instagram and had people like, oh, it's just how it is over in Asia and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I'm talking about the second part of this headline. People this might Japan. take the retard cake without even reading anything about it. I know. That's why I posted it, because I'm like, wow. I said, peak retardation. People in Japan who got used to face masks during COVID are attending, wait a minute, smiling lessons. Bullshit. So the second part is what I think teed people off, because this is a poll by Japan's public broadcaster last month showed 55% of people were wearing masks just as often now as when the government guidance was in place during the pandemic. Just 8% having stopped altogether. So I do get that. I've, I remember seeing that in movies, and I've, I've seen Asian people around here forever that wear, you know, like a little paper mask to the store, and we're always just like, oh, it's just Asians. That's what they do. Ironically, that guy, that guy that they have featured that isn't blurred looks like he actually needs that class. Yeah, he's like, how do I move these muscles? <laughs> well, these are students, so I'm not, trying happy. To, I'm not trying to be dark about it, but these are kids. It's because young kids had to wear masks for so right. long that they were and that's what uh not used to smiling adults already know how to do that uh shout out to crazy uncle rob in our telegram because he he said that exact thing about the uh psychological effect on kids <laughs> uh so right. while the rings were already common in the east asian country pre-covid with many using them to combat seasonal illnesses and hay fever seems to have worked their use skyrocketed when it became official government guidance Many people wouldn't be seen in public without a mask, without the practice being becoming near universal after the virus emerged. Uh, so this 20-year-old, a 20-year-old said, I hadn't used my facial muscles much during COVID. She has now hired the services of a smile instructor, saying it's good exercise and will help her pre- prepare to enter J- Japan's job market. Jesus fucking Hi, she's paying Christ. somebody to help. What the fuck out? is a smile instructor? How do I get paid for that? Uh, yeah, no, I know. I you know the fucking money. genius in countries that were like, you know what, this shit's fucked up. I'm gonna make a fuck ton of money when this is over. I don't know how much yen translates to American dollars, but uh, Miss Kawano's company, Agayaku, literally sm- smile education oh no has seen a fourfold increase in a fourfold increase in demand for lessons including one on one sessions that cost 44 pounds that's got to be roughly american well, I, I can tell you what yen is basically i was deployed in japan and uh yen is like we have cents and dollars over here but they only have yen so about 100 cents is about 100 yen Roughly. Oh, okay. So this is almost seven thousand dollars, or more than seven. Do- Wait a minute, I can't do math. What's seventy seven dollars? No, oh, seventy seven. Okay, that makes more sense. Still, oh, gotcha. Almost okay. eighty bucks to learn how to smile. Uh, I think there's a growing need for people to smile. She said, "No shit." I mean, it's not really a need as much as just something people fucking do. Culturally, a smile signifies that I'm not holding a gun and I'm not a threat to you. <laughs> Unless you're a fucking sociopath, that means you probably have a gun and you are a threat. I was about to say, if I'm pointing a gun at you, I'm also going to probably be smiling. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to be enjoying like the it. Joker. Don't, don't take my smile as a, a sign that I'm not a threat. No, it's, it's the idea that I'm like, dude, I never wanted to have to do this. Genuinely, I don't want to kill someone. But I was always taught if you pull, shoot. And if you shoot, kill. So... 
today's my lucky day. Like you did it. You you crossed that line. Now I get I fucking have a re- awesome. Ben's like finally got that chance. I've been waiting. <laughs> Mile. <laughs> Okay, this one's kind of gross, and for the audio listeners, actually, be glad you're on audio. Wait, worse than the butt plug? This looks like a turnip. Oh, you know what I mean when I read the headline. I'm done after this one. Sri Lanka doctors remove a 5.26 inch, 1.76 pound kidney stone from patient. Does that not look like an onion or a turnip? It's an onion. That is huge. It's bigger than a kidney. Yeah, how does the, does he have any kidney left, or did it just like set up shop and take over how does that work oh and it's uh, <laughs> yeah photos courtesy of guinness world records all right <laughs> so we have more guinness world records news. i can tell uh so dr kugada susarsan and the urological team at whatever in this place uh perform surgery on this person to remove the colossal stone from his right kidney the stone measured what I just already said and is the largest kidney stone ever recorded. The previous largest stone, because they measure these things, because what the fuck, which measured uh, yeah, a little bit less, was removed from a patient in India in 2004. And this is from Sri Lanka, which is, that's India, right? I'll what are you guys India. doing over there? Why, a country, but... why are you getting such huge kidney stones? Dude, listen to this. The kidney, um, Sutharshan said the team determined... Kune's kidney was still performing its normal function, and he is now recovering well from the operate. How? Unbelievable. I mean, isn't the kidney like that same size? It's I, way smaller oh, than yeah. that. Way smaller. I mean, a kidney is, I mean, in, d- depending on the person, is smaller than this. His kidney got- had a baby. Can you ma- So just real quick, looking at this picture, can you imagine the photographer just like, all right, hold, hold, hold the stone. All right, everybody. Look- Put on your masks. All right, look super happy. Uh, Pose. Can you imagine posing for that picture holding a nasty ass kidney stone? Well, you know what's cool what's is you can world? tell by their eyes that these doctors did not take smiling lessons. That's a natural smile. They know how to smile. <laughs> They're probably all about to barf. Yeah, I would be fucking yarking. Uh, yammering. Yeah. Uh, yes. so let's give us two more, dude. Let's do two more, and we'll get out of here. What do you got? Okay. Uh, we'll share my screen. Pick only the best for our listeners because we're talking about turning. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do one article and then one video. Yeah, I think we can do the video. Last time, I don't know if it was last time that it didn't work, but I, I changed some settings, so I think the audio should come through this time. We'll find out. All right, are you seeing, seeing this? Smelling like donuts? Oh, my God. (laughs) Yes. All right. Smelling like donuts is the key to getting laid, dating expert claims. And by the way, this website, E-Bombs World, is really fun just to go to if you're getting bored at work or something like that or just... Love E-Bombs World. I haven't heard of this since the early 2000s, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, me too. I was My buddy in the military told me about this. So the key to getting that D question mark smelling like a donut if Bonner. one tiktok relationship expert <laughs> this is it's so fucking stupid but <laughs> I'm, a, I'm gonna have a hard time reading this <laughs> if one tiktok relationship <laughs> experts viral advice um is to be believed relationship expert at ask kimberly shared <laughs> she described as quote unquote one of the juiciest flirting hacks she had ever, quote unquote, ever learned throughout her career. She's a, oh my God. Uh, the, the irresistible smell of an old fashioned donut or whatever donut you prefer. False. <laughs> it's, then why'd they even bother specifying the old fashioned donut if it doesn't fucking matter? Whatever. See if the video will play. Here we go. Relationship expert. If you want a guy to instantly think that you're like a let me, sorry, like, let, me, let me go back. It's not playing. Oh God, it. She is we'll... so hot. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna run to the store and get yourself a scent that makes you smell literally as close as possible, as humanly possible, to a donut. Now you're probably thinking, but Kimberly, why would I want to smell like a donut? This is why. <laughs> and oh society God. has fallen. We are no. fucked. No. no. Somebody... Okay, maybe. Okay, is she talking about 
chick on dude or dude on chick? Because if it's chick, dude on chick. So if I I'm gonna go to the store tomorrow and I'm going to get a perfume that makes me smell as close to what's your favorite donut? I don't have a favorite donut. All right, we'll do make <laughs> covered uh, glazed donut. I'll get that, and I'm gonna smell like that tomorrow. And it's gonna be irresistible. Jen's gonna, Jen's gonna walk in there like this. I am the god of fuck. <laughs> oh, ben loves this one. That ass. <laughs> Ben's going to get some uh, donut perfume. Or- gonna, so I guess I'm, I'm uh, a little biased on this because donuts r- smell kind of like a deep fryer. And they don't smell bad, but it reminds me of my time working at restaurants. And that's not attractive to me. You're Girl, not getting- that is not going to make me want sessy time. <laughs> Especially after having to dump the fryer oil in the back. Oh, so nasty. Used. Ugh, I can still smell that. It's stuck in my nasal passages okay. today. Here's my problem. You have to be a morning person to want to smell donuts and get laid. I do not associate those two things at all, at all, at all. So I'm like, if I smell donuts, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm hungry uh, for those Fat right lazy. now. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. eat this and then sit on the couch and take a nap. It's not like, oh, donuts. Boner. Oh, what are we watching? Well, this is the last video I'm going to show. And then Fucking you guys crikey. can... Wrap it up however you want. Is it? Does it play? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me turn the audio all the way up. My audio all the way up because last time there was an audio issue. I'll just rewind it for just a moment. It's real short. Don't worry. Oh, no. No worries. Oh, uh, yeah, there's no audio. Oh, Whoa. All right, guys, don't forget, we're still operating into the wet. The top is the top end of fire camp day to so come out here. See this big fella named Gordo and the rest of the crew. I can't understand what he's saying. Yeah, he's that's because he's Australian. He sounds like Crocodile Dundee. He's bit he was basically saying, like, all I do is I do this and look at that big old fella. I'm like, okay, what? so Why? describe it for the audio listeners though, like for the people who aren't watching what the fuck just happened. Like, Ben, go ahead. So what this retard fucking did to top our planet retard. Oh, okay. Is he <laughs> took a big old slab of meat and you- started smacking a small like riverlet of water and a fucking crocodile came flying out of there to grab the meat so that's what he did your audio is still coming through it sounds like oh there we go now it stopped okay yeah so i mean it's just a crazy aussie and we know how crazy they are shout out drew hey buddy and tim tim uh <laughs> Yeah, he's feeding a slab of fucking meat to a crocodile, and he's just like, yeah, mate, that's what we do out here. Look at that yeah. meat. And that's how you get your arm bitten off. Absolutely. That's and there was actually a, a video that I saw of a drunk guy that was taking a piss behind a bar in Florida. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys saw this or not, but he actually got his entire right arm bitten off by an alligator. That's what you do when you play that's... stupid games, you win stupid fucking prizes. Like... Jesus, good, good, that's, good. I'm glad his arm is gone. I actually, I'm glad that the internet exists because I did, had no idea that this many stupid people existed until the internet. And then it was a YouTube put on display for everybody. And you're like, wow, I'm not the dumbest person on earth. That's good to know. I feel like there's a ranking system now based on the videos you put on the internet. <laughs> oh, I've got hundreds more. There's oh, never I- a shortage. <laughs> Save them for next week, because I do actually have a Planet Retard scheduled next week, because I slacked off on scheduling our regular shows, so we're just going to do this. And actually, I like this. This is fun. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks for joining us. Uh, ben, thanks for joining us, too. We appreciate you. Yes. You're thanks. welcome. And we will be back with the regular show next week, I think. All right. Bye, now. Bye.